I realized that um, in the workplace, we don't always ask the right questions to kind of get to really insightful information from our colleagues and clients. I'm just trying to get better at that and get my team to get better at that because every time we do it, you really can understand what the underlying fears are and what and where the opinions come from, whether they're from experiences or data or really kind of rooted in deep-seated fears about kind of job, life, all these other things. Welcome to the Strategic Momentum Podcast, the show where we share tips, stories, and advice from progressive leaders on what it takes to break through that business inertia and propel you and your business forward. I'm your host, Connie Steele. In the last episode, we looked at how people make decisions in a world increasingly flooded with data. I wanted to understand whether gut-based or decision-based decision-making was more effective in business. And what I learned is that the best decisions are made when balancing both styles. And the worst decisions are made when you lean too hard one way while neglecting the other. But when you work as a team, your own decision-making style isn't the only one that matters. So today, we're looking at how to deal with different decision-making styles in order to alleviate potential conflicts and ultimately work better together with your bosses, your clients, and your colleagues. Returning to help us is our panel of industry experts, Dr. Mary Lemia, a psychologist, professor, and accomplished author who has spent her career studying and encouraging emotional awareness. Jen McDonald, the executive director of client engagement at global marketing agency, BML YNR. Kyle Laddermilk, the president and CEO of GSC Systems, which provides professional and technical engineering, staffing services, and simulation software to clients in the power and process industries. Finally, Steve Brown, a director at Salesforce that's inspiring growth of Salesforce Einstein by leading a team of talented specialists committed to driving customer success. Imagine your CEO is 100% gut-driven. They just intuitively know the decision they want to make and they go for it. But even when you have strong data that shows the CEO's decision may not be the best one, you have trouble convincing them or shifting their perspective. I've seen this happen myself and this is a situation Steve Brown found himself in earlier in his career. The CEO of one of the startups that I worked with, very illustrious career, had founded a few startups before, successfully sold companies and led units of companies. He was strictly a by-the-gut decision maker. There was no arguing with his gut, no matter what data that you had. I found that incredibly frustrating to work for because... I felt even when I had the data to back up my gut that was at odds to his gut, there was no changing his mind. I was able to talk with others in the company and they kind of validated my own opinions of uh, of where to go. Um, But at the end of the day, the CEO was the one that the board had invested in. Their trust was in him. And he was driving the strategy for the company. As a result of this conflict, you feel anxious. What can you do in the situation to help guide the organization towards the best decision? How do you influence someone to see your point of view when your decision-making styles conflict? It's a very difficult situation, one, to be in. Because as a good corporate citizen... And to keep your job and to remain gainfully employed, there's a certain amount of just get it done, go, go do, right? And let those that are above you set that direction. I would say you need to look for patterns over time. So there may be specific incidences where your your gut and even your data is telling you something that somebody above you uh, is is differing with. And if you've had the chance to voice that opinion, I think, and, and still the direction is counter to what you might decide, you go with what the, the direction the company is headed in. If that becomes a repeated scenario where it's consistently perpendicular with what you think to be the right direction, 
especially if it's perpendicular to, say, your values, right? You, you really do need to reconsider if that's the, the right place for you. Leaders become leaders over time many times because they have developed this good sense of gut, right? And gut-based decision-making that they can base with data. So I would uh, support with data. So you need to trust that a bit in the beginning, but if it becomes a recurring pattern, then I think think you may need to uh, consider being somewhere else. Jen McDonald believes in finding ways to better understand how others are seeing their world. There's always something behind the rationale, and you may need to tease it out, particularly if you're working with a client who is completely gut-driven. For Jen, she had a somewhat similar situation to Steve's with one of her clients. She and her team were able to use data to tell a convincing story in order to bridge that gap between the gut-based and database decision makers. There's one client that I have that I think is, you know, extremely gut-driven and, it, and it's really served him well. Now, there was a time recently where we were kind of reviewing some creative work with him and, and you could just tell that he was, he just didn't feel it and didn't like it. And we had worked with the brand manager, with the more junior person beforehand to kind of put some of the work in some light testing, like not overly so, but it was pretty straightforward. And, you know, right when he was kind of, I think about to say, I don't like it, it doesn't feel right. They were kind of able to say, Hey, by the way, we've decided to put, this into a survey to see is it going to change consumers' belief from X to Y, which is like really what the the plan was in the first place. And it showed that it was going to. And I think that he really kind of didn't necessarily have like a leg to stand on to sort of act, you know, to sort of have some wholesale change and just kind of move forward. So I guess it's like I feel like for someone who's gut driven Maybe it's using data to tell a story too. You know what I mean? To kind of like appeal to that side of the brain. Because I think that people who are gut driven also sort of appreciate, you know, appreciate stories, appreciate creativity. And I think sometimes people who are super data driven just like love to throw up a bunch of numbers and you're just kind of like, what are you trying to even say? Like, what's your main point? Using the data, but making sure that it's like a narrative, if that makes sense sense if you if you really believe that you um, should go in a in another another direction and I think the other thing is like people who are gut driven and they have like a they have a um, particular idea just let them talk like because you can probably get some kind of insights into what they're really thinking or kind of why they're going in a particular direction and it might actually kind of help help shape things. I think the key thing is to just ask enough questions and get them to like talk to really understand what's behind their gut. Because sometimes what's behind their gut actually like might have some, you know, analysis or experience or data behind it that might be a kind of testable proposition, if you will. And then I think an advice to somebody who is trying to talk to someone so gut driven with data is to just put that data in context and in more of a story instead of really just being dogmatic about it. Jen's comments remind me of what Dr. Lumia told us in our last episode. Our experiences get logged away in our brains. And these serve as our own set of data that we check every decision against in real time. I would think it'd be important for a person who's who's driven by gut decisions to explain or to point point out that they do have data. They have data based on their experience. And we see so many really successful people who have all of this data that's driven. Uh, you know, their their experience has given that to them. And why should they ignore something that's such important information? Our emotions are behind all of the sensations that are considered to be 
gut intuition. But the meaning we give to any intuitive sense is a contribution of our cognitive system. So our emotions amplify what's going on in the moment. And our cognitions sort of transform the emotion and they provide further information. So the person who looks like they're just basing everything on gut decisions is really using their cognition as well. They're saying, I've had a lifetime of experience and this is what my emotions are telling me based on that experience as opposed to the data you've collected. Many times they're right. Wow. I would... Not have thought of it that way at all. (laughs) We see this all the time, too, when in romantic relationships, you see it in business decisions where somebody makes an error. Then they come back and they say, I knew it. I knew it was wrong. When actually they felt it was wrong and they didn't listen to themselves. But by asking questions, Jen suggests we start to reveal the experiential data that gut-based decision makers are using and get more context in how they're approaching a decision, even if they're not entirely aware themselves. Yeah. And you know what? If you ask enough questions, you can sometimes almost get to where it came from. You know what I mean? Like this one executive that I mentioned that I say is really gut-oriented and I and I used to think that some of the things that he wanted to do was random. And then I kind of really, we just started talking and I realized, actually, you're right. Some of these things that he kind of wanted to do or strategies he wanted to implement, it was because, you know, over time, kind of got stories that, oh, at other companies, they were facing similar problems and did the opposite and it didn't work. And then they did, you know what I mean? It's like they, they it was not, it's not random. Like um, it's from somewhere and sometimes it's hard. Even the person who is using their gut sometimes doesn't even know where it comes from. So it's important to just engage them in conversation instead of like lock horns over a data point. I think I'm not, my, my, my latest thing, I'm not great at it, but I want to be better is I realized that um, in the workplace, we don't always ask the right questions to kind of get to really insightful information from our colleagues and clients. Like even just, let's say if you're presenting an idea and then it's like, well, what do you think? You'll get an answer and it will be fine, but it could be much more insightful potentially to be like, oh, is there anything that worries you about this idea? Is there anything that excites you about this idea? You might actually get really different answers that give you a window into why they think what they think and kind of what's behind their gut. And so I'm just trying to get better at that and get my team to get better at that because every time you do it, you really can understand what the underlying fears are and what maybe even where the opinions come from and whether they're from experiences or data or really kind of rooted in deep-seated fears about kind of job, life, all these other things. So anyway, I think asking the right questions and thinking about what you really want to know instead of trying to kind of always be advocating for a particular point of view I think can be pretty powerful in business and not necessarily something that we do enough of. No matter what decision-making approach you prefer, whether you're gut-driven or data-driven, bridging the gap between you and your coworkers comes down to open and consistent communication. I'll let Kyle explain further. There's like a huge interpersonal dimension as well as a professional dimension there. You know, to the extent there may be a disconnect between a supervisor and a subordinate or even two coworkers where they have this um, dichotomy of styles or, you know, one is antipodal from the other. If there is a need, if the data-driven persona is saying, hey, look, here's my data, here's my analysis, here's where we should head, and the gut-driven person says, hey, you know, my gut says no, uh, there has to be some, again, communication about 
But what is it I'm missing? Perhaps the data-driven person can gather qualitative things to create a stack ranking to, to help the data-driven person understand some dimensions of the gut, which may have some soft criteria that they can analyze. So for instance, I, I recall uh, when we were looking to expand a, into an offshore location for a prior employer, and we had to look at a variety of hard data, wage rates, productivity, but we also had to look at a lot of soft data, like philology skills. What is the accessibility of one city in the, in the country versus another? What's the relative accessibility of one country versus another, as well as different cities within a country? And I felt I was able to cross a chasm there with my boss, who very data analytic driven, yet also had a gut dimension, which is not surprising for somebody in that chair. So um, having that type of approach help close the gap of helping alleviate my anxiety, but also helping the executive and the executive team understand as much as the criteria that it is required for a successful enterprise. So that, again, um, we are aware of the decision that we all feel we've had our say and minimize the gotchas once we pull the trigger. Finding a way to strike a balance between data and gut is key even with your peers, clients, and bosses. We have to take a step back and gain perspective on why another person thinks the way that they're thinking. It can be especially frustrating if you lean heavily towards data, but you need to understand that some people are using their gut as data, especially successful leaders who've been around the block a few times. So practice asking questions, insightful questions, that will help everyone understand the story behind someone's seemingly pure gut decision because that person is actually using their cognition as well. Inversely, learn to tell the story behind the data so that everyone can understand the numbers you're bringing to the table in context. And when we foster better communication on both sides to share our perspectives, we can leverage both gut and data to make the best possible decisions. But as Steve said, you should also be wary if this conflict comes up repeatedly. If you're constantly in opposition with your teams, or superior's decisions, especially if they don't align with your core values and you've made an effort to voice your opinion, then you might not be in the right place. I want to thank our guests for sharing their advice. You can learn more about Dr. Mary Lamia at marylamia.com. That's M-A-R-Y-L-A-M-I-A.com. You can connect with Jen McDonald by finding her on LinkedIn. You can learn more about Kyle Laddermilk and GSE Systems at gses.com. And you can connect with Steve Brown by searching his name on LinkedIn. You can also find the links for all of our guests in the show notes for this episode. And join the conversation online and share your thoughts on the data versus gut debate on our new Facebook page and Instagram accounts. Just search for Strategic Momentum Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Strategic Momentum Podcast. And if you've liked what you heard, please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, leave us a review. This is what helps others find the podcast. And if you want to hear previous episodes or get show notes from this episode, you can visit us at flywheelassociates.com slash podcast. I'm Connie Steele, and you've been listening to the Strategic Momentum Podcast.